in our version of the answer to chess, basically in this game, push forward with the pawn, basically managing, controlling, leading on the key squares in the center of the board at the moment. Let it push down. You can leave it, you can push past, you know, you can come and support it, but they're all personal preference at the end of the day, and it's really up to you how you want to play it. And it's, for me, it's pretty simple to actually just capture to get rid of the pawn. Simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically. So the queen comes down and attacks. Now we're playing into the game of smaller pieces attacking higher pieces. As we know, if you attack a higher piece with a lesser piece, players get a little bit uncomfortable in certain circumstances. Sometimes you have to be wary because they may be baiting you with that position and basically saying, well, okay, if you come and attack this higher piece, your position isn't going to be that good because I'm going to checkmate you with my lesser pieces. So you have to be very mindful as to attacking the higher pieces with lesser pieces. But that is the focal point. If you can, if you get the opportunity, attack a higher piece with a lesser piece, it does disturb the opponent's psyche. And um, you do win 10p because they, more times out of 10, are going to move that piece to a place they don't really want to move to. So they move the queen back. And we develop the knight. Okay, so rationale for developing the knight is basically wanting to try and go on queer kingside castle. What we don't want to do is spend time chasing the queen around if it's not appropriate, if we've not fully developed our pieces or the piece that is attacking the queen hasn't really got much of a defense. So then you're basically losing tempo, maybe using one piece attacking the queen and then you're losing the position. So what we want to do is say, your queen is in the center of the board. It's not really going to be happy there. So we want to try and say, let's get as many pieces out as possible. Managing more squares around the king, queen, yeah, which is the higher piece. And we're still focused on going for a checkmate, but that's not available at this moment in time. So let's focus on the higher piece. And the idea behind that is just develop your pieces. And then you'll start taking squares and pieces that that player wants to wear on. So we push through the center with the pawn, looking to open up the dark square bishop. I ideally would want to sit here and attack the queen, but there's nothing there at the minute, you know, supporting. So they've taken away one of our knights. So we capture with the pawn. And they push down with their pawn now, so are they looking for a queen exchange? It kind of feels like they are, you know, if we do take, uh, are they just going to take here? But I'm thinking, well, it's going to be a loose pawn, so they're probably going to take so our queen is probably just going to face off their queen. Do they exchange from that point or do they develop their pieces? So we capture and then they captured. And as we explained, because the queen is opposite the king, obviously we, we can get the queens off the board. And they bring their, their piece out developing, which is a good idea. So we can capture and now they've got at least a piece developed. So they've not lost key tempo in terms of being attacked on their queen so now we can look to basically queenside castle because at this moment in time it's looking a little bit shot around here so it's probably not wise to go on kingside castle maybe we can use that to help drive the rooks through and put some pressure towards their king so they develop their knight and we castle queenside feeling fairly comfortable and then they castle so now we can develop the bishop out it's always troublesome, just sort of blocking this pawn with the x-ray through to the king. Also kind of stopping the knight from jumping here and playing in the centre. So they do capture our knight we take with the bishop. So feeling fairly happy with the position at the moment. Our rook is kind of owning the file for a brief moment. And magical square is here because we have the diagonal with the bishop. And can look to basically try and put a check or checkmate type position on the king. It's going to be disturbing, it's not going to be necessarily a checkmate, but it's a position that would warrant constant checks from the diagonal of this bishop. So they push the pawn down, so they're doing something they didn't really want to do. So we bring our rook up now. 
So again, kind of forcing them to pay attention to their unprotected pieces. So they're going to have to do a move they didn't really want to do. And now we can double our rooks up looking to be a force to be reckoned with at the top on the back rank. So they push the pawn down. Now we can start attacking the knight. So basically we're saying, let's try and get rid of this knight here. If we can get rid of this knight as well, then we can start maybe getting a combination of the rook on the back. We captured the knight. The knight captured. We captured. In terms of the gauge bar, obviously that's showing that well, you know, that's you've lost any advantage that you really had. But that was our focal point of just getting to the back. That's going to give them more to worry about than what we're going to worry about against them. That's so a four anyway. So they push the pawn down and we grab the pawn. Is that a pawn? Yeah, we grab the pawn. And they captured. And we brought the king back. Now it's showing as a draw. Didn't feel like a draw to me. You know, during the game, I think I've got the back rank here. Um, I don't really see what it is that they can do to actually win. And they push their pawn down. I'm going based on what they're saying, not what the computer's um, suggesting, because I can't beat the computer. So we bring the rook across. Now it's basically saying it's slightly winning for black. I don't see it. They play this move, and we can take the pawn. So this is obviously giving us an in, and it's showing plus 4.4 at this moment in time. So it's all based on what the opponent actually does. So when you do your evaluations, you can really send yourself crazy because, oh, well, if they'd have done this and, oh, well, if they, it's all ifs. If they didn't do it, then they didn't do it. So I'm looking at this in a positive way. So I'm happy with where we're at. So they bring the rook down. So I'm thinking now the king is kind of safe because they're going to lose tempo in terms of putting any more checks on our king. And maybe we can play around the back and just get a checkmate with the rooks it shouldn't be a problem from this point on as far as i could see so they bring the rook up and then we just go for the back ranker so yes the answer to chess really is about what you do against what the opponent is offering to you on the board and yes do look at your games afterwards but really don't be too too harsh on yourself if you've got a full rationale as to why you're making moves, even if it is tunnel vision and you're still finding a good position because the opponent hasn't done the exact response to actually equalize or to gain an advantage from your evaluation, and that ain't your problem. You've played the game that was offered to you. You played what was on the board and you reacted accordingly. And if you came out advantageous, then that's your good lesson learned. The answer to chess continues.